Let's get going. All right. This is a 1952 Telecaster, and uh, it's one of my favorite guitars. It's like the workhorse. I mean, if, if you don't have a toothbrush and you don't have a Telecaster, you're in trouble. Um, Leo first came out with the Telecaster. Actually, it was called the Broadcaster in 1948, and it sold for about $189. Uh, a hell of a lot less than it does now. And um, the first one was... Um, Looks exactly like this guitar, but there's no really difference in the broadcaster than this one. Now in 1950, um, Leo came out, uh, it was a transition period for the uh, broadcaster. It, um, uh, he had a problem with Gretsch uh, having the patent on um, the name broadcaster and their drums and banjos. So in, um, it, since television was coming out, he decided to call it the Telecaster. And in between that time, the uh, vintage people, he didn't have a name on it. And vintage people, people who collect these, just call it the no-caster. And this is exactly the same. Right here you can see there's no Telecaster name on the headstock at all, unlike mine. But it, primarily the same guitar as the Broadcaster and the 52 Tele. There's a little color difference. This one hasn't been in enough bars. Um, and uh, on the no-caster broadcaster and the telecaster, uh, the front pickup switch had three positions. And on the old ones like these, all the way forward was a, uh, a bassy, real bassy sound because uh, the electric bass was just about coming out then. Uh, Leo was making it. And uh, in the 48 and then 50s, people didn't have electric basses. They had the uh, doghouse. So they'd have to play the bass with the Telecaster, get that real boomy sound, you know, you can do it on that. Then in between here, you got your rhythm pickup, and all the way back was the lead pickup. And on both all those guitars, in the early, from 48 through 55, until 55 rather, the back pickup was flat, flat pulled, the uh, magnets were flat against the pickup flush, and uh, that's how you tell. That's another reason how to tell the pickups. And these pickups are widely sought after because of their bite and great distortion, uh, just compressing tone. Uh, they really sting and sing. The telly, you can tell it's an old 52, is, uh, is it's just got a black pick guard, big light pick guard, full maple neck, solid maple neck, and that old, uh, it's a spaghetti lettering, they like used to call it. A little round string tree. And the um, serial number was stamped right on the front. This one happens to be patent number, patent pending, 4248. Um, dome knobs. And a nice medium weight ash body. He used ash back then. It was like a, built like a tank. I mean, you could really knock people out with these things if you had to. And, um, the volume controls were great for doing all kinds of steel swells, like... <laughs> Which you could also do with the town tone control. Because uh, it was... Um, it's also easy to get at. Let me talk about the amp I'm in right now because it's so funky. This is the Mate. This is called a Fender Super Amp. It came out in, uh, it was first came out in 1949 and in 1950 became the Mate for the uh, Telecaster, which was soon to be called a Telecaster because uh, television was coming in. Leo had to change the name from Broadcaster to Telecaster um, because Gretsch had a patent on it for its banjos and drums. So, this particular amp um, has got two volume controls, a volume and a mic volume, treble, bass, and presence. And it's got the old um, Blue Jensen Alnico speakers, which gives it that warm tone. And 
and uh, had about 30 watts. There's something about the um, Tweed, Tweed amps that just has a real uh, transparent tone to them. Um, uh, <laughs>